I received this question from one of my Patreons, and I thought it would be worth making a video to answer it because it's probably something that other people have been wondering as well. Now in my other video about the circle of fourths and fifths, I show you how it can be used to figure out all the notes in all the major scales, using the order of sharps and order of flats. But this Patreon is asking, how do you use the circle of fourths and fifths to figure out the notes in the minor scales? I'm going to be showing two different ways. Now one of his questions was about the order of sharps and flats, and if they're still relevant when it comes to the minor scales. And the answer is yes, they are. Just as a side note, I'm just going to be talking about the natural minor scale today. So in today's lesson, we are going to be using the circle of fourths and fifths to figure out the notes in every natural minor scale. So the first thing you need to memorize is the order of sharps. And the order of sharps is F, C, G, D, A, E, B. And I always like to tell people that this is sort of just like a random series of notes. I mean, it's not random, but if you're new to this, it might seem random. You know, it's not an alphabetical order or anything like that. But if you can memorize just this random order of notes, F, C, G, D, A, E, B, then that is really all you need to have memorized in order to be able to create the circle of fourths and fifths, and then in turn create all the notes in all the different minor scales and major scales. So do whatever you need to do to memorize F, C, G, D, A, E, B. You can use mnemonics, whatever you want. Now we also need to memorize the order of flats, but the order of flats is just the order of sharps backwards. So the order of flats is, what's this backwards? It's B, E, A, D, G, C, F. And some people say it's easier to first memorize the order of flats because it has the word bead in it, and you just need to memorize bead, G, C, F. And then, if you know the order of flats, then you can just remember that the order of sharps is the order of flats backwards. Doesn't matter which one you memorize first. I personally think it's better to memorize the order of sharps first because it's the dip more difficult one, and if you definitely know the more difficult one, then it just will make it easier and quicker to recall these you know, orders of sharps and flats and all the notes and the scales, etc., etc. But either one is fine. Just know that they are uh, reversed of each other. So this order of flats is order of sharps backwards and vice versa. There also are a ton of different mnemonics people use to memorize them. You feel free to comment some mnemonics that you like in the comments below, like Father Charles goes down and ends battle, etc. Now the first way we can figure out the notes in our natural minor scales using the circle of fourths and fifths is to draw the circle of fourths and fifths with the major scales on the outside and then our natural minor scales on the inside. And um, I'm just going to show you how to do that uh, quickly. So here is my big circle, and I'm going to first label it like a clock. So I've got my 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock and 5 o'clock, 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock, okay? And I'm going to sort of highlight these three on the bottom, because these are kind of a special area on the circle, because we have actually two different keys on each of these three spots. So those are just a little bit thicker, okay? But when we're first, we're first gonna write in the major scales or keys on the outside of the circle, okay? So when we're doing that, we're gonna first write in the order of sharps, which is F, C, G, D, A, E, B, because you memorized that. Um, so then we're gonna start writing it in on, at the 11 o'clock position. So I'm gonna put my F here, and then I'm just gonna write it in clockwise. So F, then C, then G, then D, then A, then E, and then B, okay? Then I'm gonna write in the order of flats, but I'm gonna start here at this spot, and I'm gonna go counterclockwise now. So I'm gonna write B flat, and I'm gonna put a flat next to all these ones. So B flat, E flat, A flat, so B, E, A, then I have D flat, then I have G flat, then I have C flat. And I'm going to write B slash C flat, okay? And I'm going to stop at that point. Now, I mentioned earlier that these three on the bottom have two keys or two scales in each one. So do you see how this is B slash C flat? So B and C flat are what we call enharmonic equivalent. And if you don't know what those are, I have a whole video that goes into them in depth, and I will link that in the description below. But and harmonic equivalents are just two notes that have different names but sound exactly the same. They're the exact same pitch. Now what is the enharmonic equivalent of G flat? So let's look at our piano. So here's the note G. And the note G flat is going to be a half step lower, right? So it's going to be right here. 
So this is our G flat, this black key. And what's this note right here? This is an F. So it, this black key could also be called F sharp. So we would say that F sharp and G flat are enharmonic equivalents because they're they sound exactly the same. You know, if I play this note on the piano, it sounds exactly the same. But, but we could call it either F sharp or G flat. So it has two different names it could go by, but it sounds exactly the same. That's what an enharmonic equivalent is. So G flat or F sharp. Okay. Now what's the enharmonic equivalent of D flat? D flat is we could look at our piano. Where is our D? Here's D. D flat is right here, and this note right here is a C. So this note could go by the name D flat or C sharp. Okay? So this is D flat or C sharp. So we just write in the enharmonic equivalents on these bottom three. Okay? Now we're going to write in the relative minor scales on the inside of the circle. Okay? And a relative minor scale. Um, is, well, I have a whole video that goes into it in depth if you really want to learn more about it, but I'll just briefly say it's, um, there are two scales that have the exact same notes in them. They just start at different places. This video isn't really about relative scales and relative keys, so I don't want to spend much time talking about it, but if you want to learn more about them, go watch that video. I will link it below. Moving forward, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take every scale that's on the outside or every key, major key that's on the outside, and I'm going to move it three spaces counterclockwise and write it in. So let me just show you what I mean by that. So here's, we're gonna start with A, okay? And if I move A three spaces counterclockwise, one, two, three, I get here. So I'm gonna write A minor on the inside of the circle, just like that. Because C major and A minor are what we call relative keys. Okay, now let's look at E. We'll move E three spaces counterclockwise. One, two, three, okay, we land here at G. So I'm going to write E minor here. So E minor and G major are relative keys. Okay? What about B? I'm going to move B over. One, two, three. All right, I get B minor here. B minor and D major are relative keys. Okay, what about F sharp? I'm going to move that over three spaces. One, two, three. F sharp minor. Now, why did I choose to write F sharp minor here instead of G flat minor? Well, the reason is because these scales that are on the right-hand side of the circle have sharps on them. And this side on the left has flats, okay? So this is our world of sharps. This is our world of flats. And I want to keep the sharps with the sharps and the flats with the flats. I wouldn't want to write G flat here because I'd be throwing a key with flats in it into this whole world of sharps, this sharp territory. So I would want to put F sharp minor here instead. Okay, now let's do C sharp. We're gonna move that over three spaces. One, two, three. And I could put C sharp minor right here. C sharp minor. And again, I chose to move the C sharp over instead of the D flat because again, this right hand side is the world of sharps and I want to keep sharps with sharps and flats with flats, okay? So C sharp minor goes there. Next we have A flat. And I can actually move a flat over three spaces because we're allowed to have a flat just in these bottom three. Because remember, these three spaces are special. So here, what, let's move a one, two, three. I'm going to write a flat minor. Okay? And that's okay because we're going to write the enharmonic equivalent of a flat as well, which is a sharp. So even though it's on the right hand side, it gets a pass because it's on one of these bottom three. Remember, I said these three on the bottom are sort of special because we have two. In each of them, it's like they have their enharmonic equivalents written out. So because of that, we can have A flat minor here on the right. And what is the enharmonic equivalent of A flat minor? Let's just figure that out right now. So here's A flat. This note right here is a G, so it's going to be G sharp. G sharp and A flat are the same note. G sharp and A flat are enharmonic equivalents. So I'm going to write G sharp minor. So because, as I said, these three on the bottom, we, but whether it's the major scales on the outside or the minor scales on the inside, we are always going to write the two enharmonic equivalent keys or scales in each spot. Got it? Now this next one, E flat, we can move this one over. One, two, three. We've got E flat minor. Okay. And then what's the enharmonic equivalent of E flat? Here's E flat. Here's E. Here's D. This note in between them is either E flat or D sharp. So I'm going to write D sharp minor. Okay. Then 
Next we have B flat. We're going to move that over three spaces. One, two, three. I can write B flat minor. Or what's the enharmonic equivalent of B flat? Here's B flat. This is B. This is A. So what's in between them? This is B flat or A sharp. So B flat minor or A sharp minor. And we did the those bottom three. Okay, we can keep going. So here's F. We're going to move that over three spaces. One, two, three. We've got F minor. Okay. Now we have the C. We're going to move that over three spaces. One, two, three. We've got C minor. Okay. Now we have G. We're going to move that over three spaces. One, two, three. We've got G minor. Now we've got D. We're going to move that over three spaces. One, two, three. D minor. And voila, that is it. So now we have drawn out the entire circle of fourths and fifths with the major scales, major keys, whatever you want to say, scales or keys, it doesn't matter, on the outside, and the minor scales and minor keys on the inside. Now, we want to actually figure out what the notes are in these minor scales that are inside the circle, because that's what this video is about, right? That's what I told you, at least. So we are going to first identify how many sharps or flats are in each of these minor scales, okay? That's the first thing we're going to do. And it follows a pretty simple pattern. So the scale that's at the very top has zero sharps and zero flats in it. Zero, nice and easy. And actually this goes for both the major scales on the outside and the minor scales on the inside. So the C major scale has zero sharps, zero flats, and A minor scale has zero sharps and zero flats. Nice and easy. Now the key of E minor, the scale E minor, has one sharp in it. Okay, so I'm gonna write one sharp. The key of B minor has two sharps. The key of F sharp minor has three sharps. You starting to see the pattern here? The key of C sharp minor has, you guessed it, four sharps. The key of G sharp minor has five sharps. The key of D sharp minor has six sharps. The key of A sharp minor has seven sharps. And then we're going to stop there because there are only seven notes in a scale, so we can't have more than that. So that's the sharps. Now we're going to write in the flats, okay? So the key of D minor has one flat. The key of G minor has two flats. The key of C minor has three flats. How many flats do you think are in the F minor scale? Four flats. Pretty simple, right? B flat minor has... I'm going to just draw a slash here. Five flats. E flat minor has, what does E flat minor have? Six flats. And A flat minor has seven flats. And that's it. I know it looks a little crazy and chaotic down here. Hopefully it's not too messy. If you want a printable PDF that has the circle of fourths and fifths with the minor scales inside written out more clearly and just looking a little prettier and easier to read than this mess on my whiteboard, I have a printable PDF of the circle of fourths and fifths that you can download in a link in the description below. So now we know how many sharps or flats are in each of these keys or scales, but that's not really that helpful if we don't know which notes are sharpened and which notes are flattened in each of these scales. So this is what we're gonna do. We're going to revisit our good old friends, the order of sharps and flats. I'm actually just going to erase these just because I want to reduce clutter on the whiteboard, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, I'm just going to show you because I think the easiest way is to show you and then you're going to pick up the pattern, okay? So the first scale we're going to write out is an A minor scale. An A minor scale is, as I said, nice and easy because it's zero sharps and zero flats. So I'm just going to write out the notes in A minor scale. It's A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Scales are always moving in alphabetical order. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and no sharps, no flats, nice and easy. All right, now let's look at E minor. So we're gonna write an E minor scale. So the, we're gonna start with which note? The note E, right? Because it always starts with the root, so E. Now we know this scale has one sharp in it, okay? But which note is sharpened? Well, we're going to look at one of these orders of sharps or flats. And since it's a key that has a sharp in it, we're gonna look at the order of sharps, okay? So we're gonna look at the first note in the order of sharp, and that's an F. And hey, that's the note that gets sharpened, is the F, all right? So we have E, then we have F sharp instead of F, okay? Then I just keep going in alphabetical order. E, F sharp, G, A, remember we go back to A because the musical alphabet only goes up to the letter G. So E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D. And that 
these are the notes in an E minor scale. It's one sharp in it. Okay, what about the notes in a B minor scale? Okay, well, look, we know it's gonna start with the note B, right? And we know it has two sharps in it, but which two notes are sharpened? Well, we're going to go back to our good friend, the order of, are we gonna go to the order of sharps or order of flats? We're gonna go to the order of sharps because this one has two sharps in it, right? We're gonna look at the order of sharps and we're just going to look at the first two notes in the order of sharp, F and C, right? F and C, so those are gonna be the two notes that are sharpened in our scale. So we have B, C sharp, because that's one of the first two, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A. And these are the notes in a B minor scale, B natural minor scale, okay? Let's do the next one, F sharp minor. Okay, so we're gonna start with F sharp. And I can actually first just write in the letters before I even put the sharps in. So we have F sharp, then after F, just A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, and E. So these are the letters. Now let's figure out the sharps. So how many sharps are in an F sharp minor scale? Three. So we're going to look at the first three letters in the order of sharp, and that's F, C, and G. And hey, those are the three that get sharpened. So F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. And these are the notes in an F sharp minor scale. Okay, now let's figure out the notes in a C sharp minor scale. So I'm gonna start with the note C sharp. And I can first just write in the letters, just if that makes it easier to see visually. So C, and D, E, F, G, A, and B. So those are the letters. Now we need to sharpen some of the notes. How many notes get sharpened in a C sharp minor scale? Four, right? C, four, four sharps. So I'm going to look at my good old friend, the order of sharps, and I'm just going to look at the first four notes in the order of sharps. That's F, C, G, and D, and those are the notes that get sharpened. So F, C, G, and D. And these are the notes in a C sharp minor scale, okay? Now let's write out the notes in a G sharp minor scale. So G sharp, so after G we have A, B, C, D, E, and F, okay? And how many sharps are in G sharp minor? Five sharps, right? So I'm gonna to look to the order of sharps and I'm just gonna look at the first five notes in the order of sharps. One, two, three, four, five. F, C, G, D, A. And those are the notes that are sharpened. F, C, G, D, and A. And these are the notes in a G sharp minor scale. Next we have D sharp minor. We're gonna do all these. Feel free to skip ahead to the next section using the timestamps below if you get the idea and you want to jump ahead to the flats or just to another section of the video um, if you're bored. But I'm going to go through them all because the more examples you see, the more it will sink in. So D sharp minor. Okay, D sharp minor has six sharps in it. Okay, well, first we can write the letters D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. Okay, and how many sharps are in a D sharp minor scale? six sharps, right? And actually, I always remember, it's, I think it's nice and easy to remember the, the ones at the six o'clock position all have either six flats or six sharps in it, so that one lines up nicely. And same with three o'clock, has three, three sharps um, at the three o'clock position. It doesn't work at the nine o'clock position, but at the three o'clock position, the six o'clock position, we have three and six. So, Six sharps in D sharp minor. So what are the first six notes in the order of sharps? Are F, C, G, D, A, E. And those are the notes that are sharpened. So F, C, G, D, A, and E. And there you have it. Last scale that has sharps in it, A sharp minor. Let's just do this one. So A sharp, so we have A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And we're gonna look at, okay, how many sharps it has? It has seven sharps in it. And we're gonna look at the first seven notes in the order of sharps. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, hey, that's all of them, right? Every single note in this scale is sharpened. So we have F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, E sharp, and B sharp. They're all sharpened, cool. And those are all our natural minor scales that have sharps in them. Now let's do the ones with flats. Now we could start with the A minor scale if we want to. Remember that's the easy one that has A, B, C, D, E, F, G. 
Nice and easy, no sharps, no flats. Now we're gonna do D minor, okay? So D minor, so we start with D, and we know this scale has how many flats? It has one flat in it, right? So now instead of looking at the order of sharps, we're gonna look at the order of flats because we're working with a scale that has flats in it. So what's the first note in the order of flats? It's B, so that's gonna be our first flat note. So we have D, E, F, G, A, B flat, and C, okay? And that, those are the notes in a D minor scale. Now let's do G minor, okay? So we're gonna start with G. And first I can even write out all, all the letters without any worrying about the sharp spots. So G, A, B, C, D, E, and F, okay? And we know this scale has how many flats? Two flats, right? So we're going to look at the order of flats or order of sharps. We're gonna look at the order of flats because it has flats, right? Keeping flats with flats and sharps with sharps. We never mix the two. So what are the first two notes in the order of flats? It is B and E. And those are the notes that are flattened in our scale. So B flat and E flat. Got it? And this is our G natural minor scale. All right, now let's do C minor. We have C and I'll first I'll just write in the letters. C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. Okay? And it has how many flats? Three flats. So we're gonna go to the order of flats and we're just gonna look at the first three flats. B, E, and A, those are the flats. B flat, E flat, and A flat. You see the pattern now? It's really the exact same thing with the flats and the sharps, right? It's just we're using the order of flats now instead of the order of sharps. But we just keep going back to the beginning, just keep adding a new one in each time, okay? So that's, these are the notes in a C minor scale, C natural minor. All right, now let's do F minor. So we're gonna first write the letters out, F, G, A, B, C, D, and E. All right, so for F minor we have four flats, right? So we're going to look at the first four notes in our order of flats, right? Which one, two, three, four, that's B, E, A, D. It spells out the word bead, right? So I'm gonna flatten this note, B, E, A, and D. And hey, these are the notes in an F minor scale. All right, now let's do a B flat minor scale. Okay, so B flat minor. So we have B flat, and I'll just finish writing the letters. B flat, C, D, E, F, G, and A. Okay, how many flats do we have in B flat minor? We have five flats. Okay, so we're gonna look at the fir first five notes in the order of flats now. B, E, A, D, and G. And those are the notes that we're gonna flatten. B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, and G flat. Got it? So now we're going to do E flat minor. So we start with E flat, and then I'll write in the letters E flat, F, G, A, B, C, and D, okay? And this has six flats in it, right? E flat minor has six flats. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got B plus G and C. So B, E, A, D, G, and C. And these are the notes in an E flat minor scale, where we only have one more minor scale left with flats in it, actually one more minor scale in general, and that's A flat minor, okay? So we're gonna start with A flat, A flat, what comes after A? B, C, D, E, F, and G. Okay, how many flats are in A flat minor? We have seven flats, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's every single note in the order of flats. So we've got A flat, B flat, C flat, D flat, E flat, F flat, and G flat. Every single note gets flattened in this scale. Cool? So this is one way you can figure out the notes in your natural minor scales using the circle of fourths and fifths and writing in the relative minor scales on the inside with the major scales on the outside. So we, we used this method where we counted back three spaces, right? But there's another slightly simpler way that maybe would be more useful for you because this is a way where um, rather than having to draw out the whole circle with all the major scales and then move them all three spaces to the left, it's just sort of like a lot, a lot of steps. And if you're just looking to quickly sketch something out on a piece of paper so you could quickly just figure out the notes in a minor scale, then this might be a little bit easier for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm still going to draw the circle, okay? And I'm still going to label it like a clock. And let's say you just really don't care about the major scales. You just wanna know the minor scales. So I'm gonna actually be writing the minor scales on the outside um, rather than the inside. So I know normally the majors are on the outside, but if this is just, a, if you're just wanna be able to quickly draw it out 
and figure it out as quickly as possible with drawing as little as possible. I think it's easier just to write them on the outside. So I'm still going to do the exact same thing where I first write in the order of sharps going clockwise, but instead of starting the order of sharps here at the 11 o'clock space, I'm gonna start them here at the eight o'clock space, okay? So I'm gonna start, put the F right here at the eight o'clock space. And if you can't remember where to, but it's, it's actually just three, I moved it three spaces counterclockwise. So I'm going one, two, three, and I'm gonna put it right here now. And then I'm just going to draw in the order of sharps. So F, C, G, D, A, E, and B, just like that. Okay, so then we're going to take the order of flats and we're going to write the order of flats in, starting here, counterclockwise. So B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, and G flat, and we'll stop there. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is we need to write in the enharmonic equivalents of these three on the bottom, okay? So B flat, what's the enharmonic equivalent of B flat? A sharp, okay, so B flat or A sharp. What's the enharmonic equivalent of E flat? E flat or D sharp. And what's the enharmonic equivalent of A flat? A flat or G sharp, okay? Then the very last thing we need to do is we need to take these two that are right here and see how they're flats? Well, we need those two to be sharps because we need the scales that are on the right-hand side to be sharps and the scales that are on the left-hand side to be flats. The only ones that get an exception are these three at the bottom because as I said, those are special because we have the inharmonic equivalents. We have two, two of each of them. So, but these two need to get turned into sharps. So, G flat, what's the inharmonic equivalent of G flat? So if we were to look at the note G flat, there's another note that sounds exactly like G flat, but it has a sharp in it. So. That is the note F sharp. So we're going to call this F sharp instead. And we're gonna call this D flat. What is the enharmonic equivalent of D flat? So it's a note that sounds exactly like D flat, but it has a sharp name. It is C sharp. So we've got F sharp and C sharp. And that is it. So this is a lot sort of quicker to do if you were just wanting to really quickly write something out on a piece of paper to figure out your minor scales. It's a lot easier if you just start the F here and write it in like that. And then the order, so you write in the order of sharps like that and the order of flats like that. And then you're exactly where you were uh, before with the other way I showed you. And I can write minor next to all these just to, so you're not confused thinking that they're major scales and major keys, even though they're written on the outside. These are still the minor scales and minor keys. All I did was I just started the order of sharps here instead and wrote them in. And then I wrote the order of flats in like that. Cool? And just to make it clear, this is really the exact same thing that we had earlier in the video too, when I had both major and minor scales written out. So this this is still the key that has zero sharps, zero flats. E minor has one sharp. B minor has two sharps. F sharp minor has three sharps. C sharp minor has four sharps. G sharp minor has five sharps. D sharp minor has six sharps. And A sharp minor has seven sharps. D minor has one flat. G minor has two flats. C minor has three flats, F minor has four flats, B flat minor has five flats, E flat minor has six flats, and A flat minor has seven flats. So still the same, and it, then it still follows the same rules with the sharps, order of sharps and order of flats when we're trying to figure out which notes are sharpened or flattened in each of these scales. So just, just as a quick little example quiz thing, let's, let's try to create um, two two scales, okay? So first let's figure out the notes in a C sharp minor scale, okay? So C sharp minor, I know my first note's gonna be C sharp, right? And then how many sharps or flats are in this key? So here's C sharp, we have four sharps, right? So what are we gonna do? We're going to look at the order of sharps, right? Not the order of flats, because it has sharps in it. Order of sharps, and we're gonna look at the first four notes in the order of sharps, that's F, C, G, and D, okay? So those are the notes that are gonna be sharpened. So C sharp, right? Then D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, and D. So the first four notes, F, C, G, and D, those are our notes that are sharpened, F, C, G, and D. And those are the notes in a C sharp natural minor scale. Let's do another one. Let's do the notes in a G minor scale. Okay, so G minor. So I'm gonna start with G. I can write out the letters first, G, A, B, C, D. E and F, okay? So, 
How many sharps or flats are in the key of G minor? Well, two flats, right? Two flats. Okay, so which notes are flattened? It's nice to know we have two flats, but which two notes in the scale are flattened? Well, we're going to look at the order of flats, and we're just going to look at the first two notes in that order of flat. Those are B and E. Those are the two notes that get flattened, so B flat and E flat. And voila, those are the notes in a G minor scale. And that is it. Hopefully you guys have found this video helpful, and hopefully you have a better understanding of how to figure out the notes in your natural minor scales using the circle of fourths and fifths now. Um, there are other ways to figure out the notes in minor scales, such as counting a certain number of whole steps and half steps, but this is how to do it using the circle of fourths and fifths. What I would recommend doing is just practice drawing out this circle of fourths and fifths, and you could practice just drawing it with the minor scales on the outside, sort of just this exact one that we have right here. Just try practice drawing that on a piece of paper to quiz yourself. Um, see if you can do it by memory. Um, really, as I said, all you need to memorize are these two order of sharps and order of flats, and once you know that, you can really create the whole thing by memory. And you could just start the F, the order of sharps here, at this eight o'clock position, then clockwise, right in the order of sharps, then starting here at the seven o'clock, do the order of flats counterclockwise, and write in your enharmonic equivalents for those bottom three, change these two to sharps instead of flats, and that is your circle of fourths and fifths with the minor scales written on the outside. Then the next thing you can do is you can try to quiz yourself by writing out notes in different natural minor scales by memory. So you would just draw out this circle of fourths and fifths as quickly as you can, and then try to write out the notes in different minor scales just to quiz yourself. Then the next step out on top of that, after that, once you feel like you're pretty good at that and you can do all this pretty quickly, try to do it in your head, so not on a piece of paper. And I think a really good time to do this is when you're going to bed at night, like when you're laying in bed with your eyes closed trying to fall asleep. Just try to visually draw out this circle of fourths and fifths in your head and then say, just quiz yourself and say, hey, I'm gonna, let me see if I can figure out the notes in a G minor scale using the circle of fourths and fifths. And so you're gonna have to sort of visually figure out where G minor is on the circle of fourths and fifths first to figure out how many sharps or flats it has. And you're saying, oh, okay, all right, I figured out it has two flats, okay. Now I need to figure out um, what are the two flats, okay, the order flats, B flat, E flat. Okay, so then the notes are G, A, B flat, C, D, E flat, F. Oh, okay, and working that through in your head is um, actually very good. Uh, there's something to be said for trying to do things in your head and not on paper. Um, people would like to do that with certain math problems. Um, uh, it just sort of sinks it into your brain in this deeper way. But you don't need to do that until you've spent a long time practicing it just on paper uh, first. Just get comfortable doing it on paper first, then you can try doing it in your head. It's just a, sometimes if you have a hard time falling asleep, maybe you'll find it so boring you'll just pass out easily and then then it's a good way to help yourself fall asleep. <laughs> anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. If you want to see other videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. I post one video a week and I would love to have you here. Be sure to like this video if you did, share it with a friend if you found it helpful, and turn on your bell notifications so you know when I post a new video. Please feel free to leave a comment with any questions you have, or if you just wanna say hey, I always like to hear from you guys. Um, and that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and night, and I will see you next week.